there has charmed my heart. I feel the power of conquering love. Well, quick, quickly, tell me, what shall I do to ease this wrecking passion? Nay, madam, I fancy your passion has little occasion for lenitives. It blazes so violently at first as like to be soon extinguished. Oh, dear Lucy, don't trifle with me, but contrive. Imagine. Oh, do anything to get me sight of that dear man. And in earnest of further rewards, here, take this. Matt, I receive your commands with much joy, but your present with more. I'll try what this projecting brain can do, and if you step into the next room, I'll soon give you an account of my proceedings. Sir? Sir, one word with you? Your business? May one ask you a civil question and be resolved? Oh. A civil question, sayest thou? What's it, prithee? A night's lodgings? If so, pull off thy mask, I'll resolve thee instantly. But I do not strike bargains in the dark. Well, I don't know, sir, but it may tend to that, by way of proxy at the long run. But at present my commission reaches no further than to know your lodgings. If anything comes on, I fancy it will not displease you. Hmm, this is but a petty fogger in intrigues, I find. Egad, I'm like to be pretty well employed during the carnival. Well, considering I am a stranger here, this hit may be a lucky one and the lady handsome. <laughs> Again, I'll fancy her so at least worked, but for the pleasure of expectation. What are you studying, sir? Are you so long resolving whether you shall accept a lady's favour or no? No, faith, child, I'm not over scrupulous in these matters. Let her be but woman, and we shan't disagree. And so, thou mayest tell her. There's a direction for thee. Frank and easy, a la mode de Paris. Well, these indifferent sparks charm more than all your cringing fops. Now to my business. Let me see. I'll to my lady. She'll write. I'll carry the letter. And the devil will turn saint if I don't bring them together and merit a further recompense. By coupling, many have their fortunes made. I only want preferment, not my trade. Who waits? Do you call, sir? Montaigne, run and tell Signora Ronquilla I have done with her forever if she does not send this evening the hundred ducats she promised to lend me. And, Harky, as you come back, acquaint Signora Cornara, I shall be busy tomorrow, and desire she will put off her visit till another day. Sir, there's somebody at the door. Well, see who it is. Sir, a gentlewoman desires to speak with you. A gentlewoman? Admit her. Well, it is but a great fatigue to oblige the whole sex. Oh, what news from your lady? This will inform you, sir. Hum, hum, a letter. Though it may seem improper for one of my sex to make the first step in an amour, yet you ought to consider that the rigorous confinement we are under all the year round may, in some measure, excuse the liberties we take during the carnival. If you have the courage to meet me, <laughs> I shall be at four in the afternoon in the Piazza di Spagna, invisible to all but yourself. <laughs> well, 
I believe all women in Venice are wild for gallants. Sir, what answer shall I return to my lady? Gad, I am in doubt whether I do throw my tongue away on this intrigue or no. Harky, child, step into the next chamber and I shall answer your message instantly. Let me see. Monday, two in the afternoon, I'm to meet Signora Belletta at her nurse's. Mm, she's a pretty rogue and so I'll go. At three of the clock, Signora Dorinda, the senator's wife at the Indian house. For sure she's an old acquaintance. I shan't go. At half past three, Countess, the wrinkle. She presented me with a gold-hilted sword. See it fool, does she think I'll bestow one of my visits upon an old piece of antiquity for a trifling present all worth above three score pistoles? At a quarter past four, oh, my seamstress Dorothy Steenkirk, she provides me with the linen. Oh, this visit may be put off for a new intrigue. And so, I'd acquaint the messenger. Did you deliver my letter to Ludovico, Lucy? Madam, I did. I found him in his study, reading the lover's watch, which, he says, does not at all agree with his constitution. He hates injunctions of love, like those of penance, for the one, says he, is no more pleasurable to the body than the other, beneficial to the soul. What a fine gallant I'm like to have with these principles. Well, what did he say to a summons from a woman of my quality. Did it not make him wish that the assignation were sooner than the appointment in the letter? He first hummed over your billet and, pausing a while, desired me to stay for an answer in the next room. Then, coming to me, he asked me what country woman you were. For, said he, if she should prove an old acquaintance, I would use her damnably. But when I had assured him you never saw the outside of these walls, he began to have that desire which all men have to a new face. Very well, and what then? He straight inquired whether you were black, brown, fair, young, old, maid, wife or widow. I told him he was a wretched wife to an old, impotent, rich, covetous, noble Venetian. Beautiful, young, generous and of a fair complexion. He hugged me at those words, seemed transported at the news, and told me that in intrigues a wife was most suitable to, to his temper. For, said he, there's neither children to father nor honour to repair, and where his pocket and liberty are safe, he is happy to venture his body and soul. Hmm. Excellent maxims. <clears throat> In short, madam, he says he has had several bills of this nature drawn upon him of late, and how much his stock may be exhausted, he knows not. But, however, he'll meet you, and if he cannot answer your expectation, he'll give you earnest. You talk merrily, girl. I hope you did not give him my name, for I should be loath to trust a man of his character with my reputation at first dash. No, madam, I only told your quality. That's well. Oh, uh, reputation. What several sorts of slavery do we undergo to preserve thee? For to be thought virtuous, we are forced to be constantly railing against vice, though our tongues and maxims seldom agree. Alas, madam, that pretense has grown too common. For the men now take it for granted that a lady is very near surrendering when once she holds out that flag of defiance. Well, men treat us very barbarously. They neither suffer us to be honest, or allow us to be thought so. Ah, here, uh, take this key and uh, secure anything concerning my reputation. And if my husband should wake ere I come back, then you may easily find out some excuse to prevent his inquiries. For the carnival allows us more liberties than at other times we dare pretend to. Now, I know your honesty, and I will rely upon it. Indeed, madam. I am honest at the bottom. Hmm. Uh, well, I'll be gone. Tis about the hour. Good luck attend you, madam. Oh, oh heavens. Here comes my lord. 
Madam? Madam! Madam! Oh, Lord, what shall I say now she's gone? Hist! Hist! Lucy! D don't, 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 don't call your lady, for I have a word or two to say to thee in private. And have waited for this lucky opportunity a great while. Now, Venus be praised. I hope he has some business of his own that may give my lady an opportunity to mind hers. Well, Lucy, well, canst thou guess my business now? No, indeed, sir. But I'm certain an old man's business can't be great. Here, child, this will tell thee. Look it. Look it, I say. Ah, thou hast a pretty pouting lip, a delicate roguish eye. Such an old, such a cast, ah, rogue, faith. Thou art very pretty, and in short, if any one rival thy lady, it will be thee, Lucy. He cannot have fire in me yet. On my conscience, and little too, I believe. Yet, I wish he has enough to serve my ends. I'll make my fortune. <coughs> Sir, what do you mean? I rival my lady? Heaven forbid! I would not injure so good a woman for the world. Pishaw, Pishaw, where's the injury done to her, child? A dot, I'll give thee a hundred crowns. No injury, say you, my lord. I wonder you should be so jealous of my lady and preach such religious maxims to her when your own principles are quite opposite. Looky here, child, a man may do that which would look abominable in a wife. A woman's reputation is a nice thing. Tis so, and therefore tis but reason I should take care of mine. Ah, uh, prithee, no more of that. Thy reputation shall be safe. I'll marry thee to my gentleman. Gentleman? Valet? Fuch! And what good will a hundred crowns do me when my virginity is gone? Indeed, if you loved me as much as you say, and would make my fortune, for I should love extremely to be a lady, I cannot tell how far you might persuade me. I know my reputation would be safe in your hands, my lord. Make thy fortune? Why, I've known some of our nobles to marry a wife with less than a hundred crowns. But a dod, thou art a charming girl, and therefore I'll make it a hundred pistols. What sayest thou now, Lucy? Huh? A dod I must bust thee. Ah, oh, rogue, methinks I am a young, rusty gentleman again. Thou shalt find I am, girl. I believe I shall fail you, old gentleman. Well, sir, make it up a thousand pistoles, and I'm yours. Else I'll die a maid. I'm resolved. A thousand pistoles? Why, thou art the most unconscionable wench in Italy. Why, it is the price of a duchess in some countries. Oh, come, come, prithee. Be reasonable, Lucy. Reasonable? Why, you don't ask a reasonable thing. Look you, you know my mind. I'll not bait a penny. I warrant my lady would give me two hundred at least for my discovery. That's life. She won't tell my wife. Sure, I'm ruined if she does. I'd rather give her two thousand. Hold, hold, Lucy, sweet Lucy, Rithy, come back. <sighs> oh, faith, thou art so pretty, I can deny thee nothing. <sighs> come, it shall be what thou wilt. Come now, rogue, let's retire to thy chamber. Nay, nay, no entering the premises till you have paid the purchase. <laughs> Dot, thou art a wag. Come in, then, and I'll discharge the debt. After coming, gypsy. Thou shalt have reason to say so before I have done with you, old gentleman. For I am resolved to show you a trick and preserve my virtue. For did base men within my power fall To avenge my injured sex I jilt them all And would but women follow my advice they should be glad at last to pay our price. Not 
watch it come. Ungrateful man. Must a woman of my quality wait? How have we lost our power since the creation? When the whole world had but one single lord who every creature did readily obey. Yet he, that mighty he, caught with a smile, flew to the embraces of the tempting fair. But now each puny sinner dares cross a woman's inclination. Are you come, Signor? I suppose you had some other assignation that kept you from making my hour. Well, well, pursue it, pray. I'll not interrupt you, your servant. I hope he does not take me at my word. Nay, nay, Signora, why this passion? Thou sent me a challenge, and I, like a man of courage, am come to answer it. Pray don't let a quarter of an hour break squares. I own it was a fault to keep a lady waiting, but friends, madam, friends are good. Why not the devil? Come, I'll make thee amend. Friends and good wine. I suppose these friends were female ones. Men, faith? Shall you judge of that? But suppose they were. Why should you be angry that I did not fly with a desired haste as long as I am come time enough to give you? satisfaction. Besides, I hadn't seen your face yet, and for all I know, it may reward my compliment in coming now. Pretty madam, unmask. And then, I'll tell thee more of my mind. The devil take this fellow, yet methinks I love him for his indifferency. You talk, sir, as if you were unskilled in the art of love. Don't you know that expectation feeds more than twenty tasted pleasures? Um, some sort of fox it may, but I'm none of those. I never give my opinion of a dish till I've tasted. And nor do I care to dine often on one sort of meat without changing the sauce. Uh, but when that cloud's withdrawn, how long I shall keep my resolution, I know not. You say you so. Well, then the only way to preserve your appetite is to feed you slenderly, or only to let you see the food, but not to taste. Faith, madam, I'm no chameleon, but flesh and blood, therefore these prescriptions are of no use. One sight of that dear charming face of yours would oblige more your humble servant. <sighs> What think you, sir? Is there anything in this face worth your regard? Ah, by heaven, an angel. Now, madam, blame yourself for my neglect, for had you sent the picture of her in whom all these beauty centers I had in this place waited the coming of my goddess, or rather flown on the wings of an eager love, to meet my fair though in the arms of ten thousand angels. Say, my charming angel, do you forgive me? But why do I ask? Your eyes assure me you do. At least I shall force a pardon out of those dear, soft, ruby lips. Hold, hold, be not so lavish. A sparing gamester is likely to keep in stock, while a refused hand casts at one throw all he has away. To fear that were to doubt your charms, in whom a lover is sure to find constant supplies. But we lose time. Let's retire to my lodgings where I will show thee the best proofs of my love I can. Well, he's a charming fellow. How happy are the wives in England and France, where such as he swarm. Come, madam, come. Why, what do you mean by this delay? Consider I'm a gentleman, a mortal, wishing, amorous gentleman. And consider I am a woman. Aye, aye, that I know. At least I hope to find you such, or I would not be in such haste. 
and have a reputation to preserve. Oh, Lord, what a damn turns this a reputation, you say? Egad, I find all women make pretense to that mysterious word. What are not you married, madam? Yeah, it's a lot then. Why then, you have a reputation to preserve, that's all. Oh, sir, yes. All in all to me. Uh, do you consider what country you are in, sir? Aye, faith, madam, and what constitution I am of too. I know murder is as venial a sin here as adultery is in some countries, and I am too apprehensive of my mortal part not to avoid danger. Therefore, madam, you have an infallible security. If I should betray you, I bring myself into jeopardy. And of all pleasures, self-preservation is the dearest. A very open speaker, I vow. Aye, madam, well, that's best. Hang your creeping, cringing, whining, dying, lying lovers. Pew! Their flames are not more durable than mine. Though they make more noise than flames. Hang the whining way of wooing. Loving was designed a sport. The deuce take me if this fellow has not charmed me strangely. Well, the carnival is almost over, and then I shall be shut up again like a nun. Hey, oh, this time shall be so short. Well, let's make the better use on it then, my dear. We will consider when there is nothing else to do, but at this present time, there's a matter of the greatest moment I must impart to you. Therefore, dear Rogue, come, dear Rogue, come. Hold! I have outstayed my time. I must return home instantly to prevent discoveries. But, Faith, madam, this is not fair. To raise a man's expectation and then disappoint him, will you? You to be served so yourself now? Oh, I shall endeavour to disengage myself from my jealous husband and contrive another meeting. But you will be sure to meet me again. I give you my hand as a pledge. And I this kiss in return. Adieu, my charmer. Signor, farewell. Thou art an admirable girl. What would half the ladies in Venice give for such a servant? Truly, you have reason to say so, for it is not the first intrigue I have managed for you. But how do you like your new servant, madam? Oh, above all men living, Lucy. He has the most bewitching conversation I've ever met. Oh, say, is there no way to contrive a second meeting? For I'm impatient till I see the dear man again. For the end of carnival draws near, and indeed that is the end of life to me. Oh, for then again I will be cooped up with age, forced to endure an eternal coughing, spitting, snoring and ill nature. Well then let me make the best of life. Indeed, madam, I pity you, and wish twere in my power to rid you of this old withered log. But though that's impossible, Yet, I may do you some little services to make life's tedious journey pleasant. Let me see. I have it. What would you say now, madam, if I should contrive a way to have your lover in your own chamber? Oh, that were worth the king's revenue. Well, speak. How? How, good Lucy? Why thus? He shall put on my clothes, and in my place attend you. Rare contrivance! Oh, but my husband, Lucy! Oh, let me alone to manage him, madam. He is defective in sight, you know, and not mistrusting anything, will not be over-curious. And if he should, I have a way to bring you off, my life aunt. This plot may be of use to my design. I'll manage it with care. Oh. The pleasure of hearing my husband lie, coughing, calling me to bed, and my answering, Coming, dear! 
and while he imagines me in the next room undressing, I'm happy in the arms of my Ludovico. <sighs> Certainly there is as much satisfaction in deceiving a dull, jealous husband as in getting a new gallant. Were it not grown so common? I mean, every tradesman's wife must have her gallant too. And sometimes making a journeyman out of the apprentice, eh, his indentures be out. <laughs> It is an insufferable fault that quality can have no pleasure above the vulgar, except it to be in paying their debts. Well, dear Lucy, I admire thy contrivance. Well, about it instantly. About it instantly? Is that all? I must have my fee first. I will, madam, and you may expect your lover instantly. But, madam, What's to be done with your brocade nightgown you tore last night? It can ne'er be mended handsomely. Nothing to be done without a bribe in love as well as law. Well, Lucy, if you manage this intrigue with care and secrecy, then the gown is yours. Madam, my lord desires to speak with you. Oh, tell him I'm coming. Madam, I'll go about your business. Your ladyship's very humble servant. Now, by way of mortification, must I go entertain my dull, old, jealous husband? Give me but wine, that liquor of life, and a girl that is wholesome and clean. Two or three friends, but the devil a wife. And I'd not change state with a what king. What king, senor? Well, you're a pleasant gentleman. Ah, my little female Mercury. What message bringest thou, huh? Will thy lady bless me with another sight, huh? How? When? Where? Oh, I'm all in a flame. Come along with me, sir. I'll help you to an extinguisher presently. Well, if thou meanest thy lady with all my heart, but I canst tell thee, she'll rather prove oil than what you speak of. But say, where am I to see my lovely charmer? In her chamber. Good. But how the devil can that be done? Nay, without the help of a conjurer, I assure you. If you dare take me for your pilot, I'll warrant you success in your voyage. I'll set you safe in the island of love. Tis your business to improve the soil. I warrant thee, girl. Do you but bring me there once, and if I play not my part, may I never more know the pleasure of an intrigue? Which, if I mistake not, is the strictest curse can fall on you. Well, you must suffer a small metamorphosis. What think you of personating me a little? That is, dressing in my clothes and waiting on your mistress in her bedchamber, huh? Gad! I'm afraid I shall make but an awkward chambermaid. I'm undisciplined in dressing a lady's head. Oh, sir, your commission won't reach so high as the head. I believe my lady will excuse little matters. You can undress, I suppose. No, oh, the best and the quickest of any man in Venice. But a pox aunt can't find no other way. I, I, well, I like petticoats in their proper places. But I don't care to have my legs in them. And so you resolve against it? <laughs> no, not absolutely resolved, child, but... But what, sir? <laughs> oh, nothing. I will follow thy directions, whatever comes on. Now, lead the way. Well, nothing suits better with my humour than a friend, a bottle, a new mistress, and a convenient place. My wife's a fine woman, a very fine woman, but a pox she's a wife still, and this young jade runs in my head plaguely. Well, here it is under my hand, a thousand pistols, which is a great sum for a maiden head as maiden heads go nowadays. Ah, had I been young now, a fiddle and a treat had bore the prize away. But when we old fools dote, they make us pay. Oh, are you come? Here, here, Lucy. 
Here's a fortune for thee, worth twenty maiden heads a dot. I've not so much money by me at present, but there's security. Are your lordship's bonds sufficient? Well, but that I am satisfied my reputation is safe with your lordship, or twice the sum should not have prevailed. Go to my chamber, my lord. I'll but step and see if my lady wants anything, and I'll be with you instantly. You won't stay, Lucy? Ah, oh, girl. Bust thy lady's chucky now. Do now. Oh, Lord, not here. We shall be discovered. Well, thou art a cunning sinner. Make haste, Lucy, to us here. You're in mighty haste, old gentleman, but I shall deceive you. My end is gained. I have my fortune made. Man has not me, but I have man betrayed. Why, what makes this young jade stay so long? A dod, this is to pay for beforehand. <laughs> ah, methinks I hear a laughing and a giggling in my wife's apartment. I must know whence this mirth proceeds. Oh, here's Lucy coming. Harky, you pray. Why did you make me wait so long? Nay, I'm resolved. You shan't escape me now. Oh, Benedictine, what have we here? A man disguised in my wife's chamber, and I unarmed? Oh, cursed minute! Speak, thou wicked prophet, thou son of iniquity! What camest thou here for? Ah, thou priest of Baal, to offer sacrifices upon the altar of my wife! Oh, my head, my horns weighed down to the ground already! Within there! Bring me my sword and pistols! A pox on old petticoats! What a devil shall I say now? Though for a sword it will be worth more to me now than my tongue! Oh, oh thou wicked, fallacious woman! What ails, my dear Chucky? Why dost thou call for arms, dear? To cut down that vile creeper which overruns thy garden of virtue! Oh, impudence assist me! Ha! Heaven! What is this? A man? In disguise? A thief it must be! Raise the servants! We could have all had our throats cut in our bed! Oh, now for Lucy, for I'm at a loss to come off. No, no, I warrant you know he is more gentle in bed. Oh, oh the devil! What does she mean? Death, hell and furies! If I come off now, catch me at this sport again and hang me! Oh! Are you there, mistress? How come this man here in your clothes, ha, huh, gentlewoman? How confidently she asks the question, poor lady, as if she knew nothing of it. Now must I bring her off. For reasons you must not know, madam. Ah, thou wicked pair of bellows to blow the fire of iniquity. Why, thou art the very casement through which thy mistress sucks the air of abomination. Tell me, I say. How came he here, and what for? And be sure it be a substantial lie, or it will not pass. All my hopes are in her impudence. Hark ye, sir, one word with you. Do you remember our agreement tonight, sir? Why, what of that, huh? Then imagine what I designed that gentleman for. I'm honest, sir, that's all. I'm honest, sir, that's all. Honest with a pox, and so you honestly provided a companion for my wife in my absence, huh? No, sir, I designed him for your companion in my absence. This is the business he was dressed for. Therefore, no more words, but believe my lady honest, or all shall out. Oh, the devil, this shall pass. I say, do you think I'll be cockolded, jilted, bubble, and let it pass for a Christmas gamble? A dog, give me my bond again, oh! Oh. No, sir. Hold there, sir. Women and lawyers never fund a fee. Tis your best way to be patient now. I'll not take blows. Why all this whispering? Why mayn't I know the business? I'm mistaken if you have not known too much business already. But I am right enough served. I had made more ground before than I could manage. I had no need of my neighbours. Right, my lord. Ground that lies fallow will breed weeds in time. But yours is clear yet. Damn your jests. 
I shall expect her better account, do you hear? And I'll find a servant to see you out of doors. Well, this was an admirable lift at a pinch. She has brought me off now, and if e'er they catch me at this music again, I'll give them leave to make an Italian singer of me. No more intrigues in disguise. If it had not been for the waiting woman now, I might have been hanged for a thief. What, all the mort, senor? No courage left? Faith, madam, not much. I think I have lost my manhood with my breeches. This transformation may suit with gods, but not with mortals of my humour. Come, prithee, good Mistress Lucy, help me to my proper shape now. For, though I have a natural inclination to petticoats, I hate up upon my own back. Hark! I hear Campesino's music. He gives a mask tonight. You are already dressed for masquerade. Won't you stay and take a dance? Gad! I think I'd rather dance a jig with thee elsewhere. But thou art a pretty girl. And thou hast a good deal of wit too. Oh, but a pox on Honest thou sayest thou canst swallow a pill except tis gilded over with matrimony. And that turns your stomach, I warrant. Why, aye. Faith, my stomach is damn squeamish in these matters. Yet, ye gad, if I could find one with half as much money as thou hast wit and beauty, I'd marry and be honest. You'd marry her money, that is. What with the other child? There is no living upon love, thou knowest. Though I could live well enough to. Well, suppose I help you to a lady with a round sum. You'd keep your word and marry her? I am a gentleman. I scorn to break my word. Well, then, sir, come to the mask, and I'll engage you a mistress, if you are not both curious. With all my heart. I'm now resolved to leave this wenching trade, for no man's safe upon a hackney jade. The lay of danger makes the pleasure pain. A virtuous wife shall always be the same. Give me but wine, that liquor of life, and a girl that is wholesome and clean. Ah, Lucy, I'm come, thou seest. I expect thou shalt be as good as thy word, child. Is the lady here? The lady is forthcoming, if you are still in the same mind. My lover here. Hawky, Lucy. By and by, madam. I am catering for myself now. Well, sir, will two thousand pistoles do? I must humour her. Aye, child. Well, then, I must take you at your word, sir can produce the aforesaid sum. With a little of your assistance, my lord. Um, a pretty wife I'd like to have. Catch me there if you can. How's that? How? The Mistress Lucy worth two thousand pistoles? Aye, and a very good paymaster I have for one half of it too. Do you know this hand, my lord? Confound your jilting sneer. <laughs> what? A thousand pistoles a dish, my lord. I hope you don't change often. <laughs> I say, I'll be revenged. Tis all false, tis counterfeit. <laughs> but if it had been current coin, I had suffered you to put your stamp upon it. In my bedchamber, my lord. How have you tricked my husband out of a thousand pistoles? And not told me about it? Nay, madam, don't frown. Remember, you have tricked him out of something too, which I never told him of. Don't urge me to more discoveries. The jade has me on the hip. I must be silent, or she who has her husband's bed abused can ne'er expect she should be better used. So, 
Here's trick upon trick. But faith, you shall never trick me out of my liberty. I'm not so fond of a wife as to marry a chambermaid, though with ten times as much money. And so, sweet mistress Abigail, your humble servant. What? My lover gone? With all my heart. Better now than after. For whilst I have my fortune in my own hands, I must have no need to sue for a separate maintenance, and get nothing for it neither. When the winds rage and the seas grow high, they bid mankind beware. But when they smooth and calm the sky, tis then they would ensnare. So the bright tire's kindness shows by frowning on her lovers, for ruin only from her flows. When she her charms discovers